In this week's Photoshop design tutorial, I'll teach you how to do a simple phone design in Photoshop. So hey guys, welcome back to a brand new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny and you can find me over at ReadsaPro.com. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys how to do a very simple thorn design in Photoshop. We're going to work with two text layers and as well two different shape layers. Now, remember, you can also purchase our Tronic Design Media Package and get a ton of things from everything that I've created here, from the backgrounds, PSDs, shapes, brushes, everything that you need to get you started. So yeah, enough of the talking, let's head into the tutorial. So over in Photoshop, in our right hand side here in the Layers Palette, you guys get to see, first of all, again, three new folders over here. So again, Media Package, Background and Design on top. The media package we'll get to in a very little bit. For now, let's head into the background layers here. I want to open everything and quickly show you guys what I've done with the background. So first of all, again, color adjustment and then obviously the image. Starting out just with a complete new black background. Again, so the background here, the, the picture is actually a little bit darker. Again, if you are completely new to this, please have a look on the channel are some more tutorials teaching you the beginners how to operate and work with this. Then also the background layer here, it was actually at 100%, but I've set this to 60%, so it is just a little bit darker and I can now go ahead with adjustment layers and tweak this a bit more. So second step here, adjustment layers, just the curve. So let's have a look, highlights down a little bit and the shadows just up a bit to get that washed look out of it. So let's have a look, here is the wash looked. Okay, I'm missing also a little bit of color. So again, on top of that, selective adjustment layer, just with the neutral tones, have a look, here are the values, and again, blacks as well, here are the values. Let's have a look, before and after, before and after. Just a little bit of an adjustment here to get the color back. So yeah, that is basically all for just the background, super, super simple. Now, let's head into the whole design here. First of all, I've worked again with two shape layers, basically the horns here and then this triangle. And then we've also worked with two different font types. So let's get started now. I'm going to turn off everything here, the design. I'm going to go right away to view and say new guide. So first of all, under horizontally, I'm going to say 50%. Okay, and then as again, view, new guide again, vertically 50% as well. So like I said, I'm sometimes a bit lazy. Uh, you can do this with guidelines or you can also leave this step. For me, it's sometimes a little bit easier. Now, first step that I want to do is go back to my shapes. So I'm going to go to the tool section here and just select the custom shape tool all the way back to the top here. So I actually get into my library. So you'll see I have a ton of shapes here in my library if you want them as well have a look again in the Tronics Design Media Package. It's $4.99 per month. You get everything that I create every single week. Every shape, every background, every PSD. Okay, so down here you guys see now a new shape over here. It's basically a triangle. I'm going to select it and as well going to make another guideline here, maybe just at the top somewhere. I'm a bit lazy to be honest, you can obviously always calculate it here with the ruler, right? If you also don't have the ruler, please go to view and select ruler over here. Now, I'm going to drag down a guideline. Let's set the guideline maybe to like, mm, I think 20 or something over here. Okay, Z to zoom out again and press U on the keyboard, brings you back into the custom shape tool. Now, I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard going to the anchor point here and basically to my guidelines and just going to place it over here and drag. Hold shift though. So I'm just dragging it out like so and going to stop right there. Okay, that is good. Next step again, take the move tool. I'm going to move it a bit into the center, also back to the shape tool because I want a white foreground color. So under fill here at the top, just select it and hit the white foreground color here. So right away you get a white foreground color. Great. I'm going to also press Command, Shift and H together. This will hide the outlines here of the path. Then next up I will do is also go back again into the shape layer here and just hit right click and say rasterize this layer. For now I'm happy with the size. Mm, yeah, maybe I'm not too happy with the size. Let's zoom out a little bit more. I'm going to take another guideline from the top 
and also if it's down here at 19 I'm gonna go two steps down maybe 17 uh, 17 centimeters so that's how big I actually want my shape so select the shape again I'm gonna press command and T remember I'm working on a Mac if you're a Windows person please press control when I say command so command T puts you back into the transform mode hold shift select an anchor point and just make this bigger so it's an extra step now we could have done this earlier okay take the move tool place it into the center and I'm happy with that now next step I'm gonna go right click onto this layer and say rasterize so we can now delete from it and do certain things with it again shape tool here and again going to my triangles I'm gonna select the last triangle which is a perfect triangle and then basically hold shift again and let it equally expand let me do this step again. I'm going to go to history quickly. Just go one step back. And first of all, what I want to do is place new guidelines once again. So take the move tool, take, go onto the rulers and just drag down two guidelines. Like so. Okay. And I'm going to zoom out again. And now I will show you why I did this. If I now go back to the shape tool, select the triangle again and hold shift on the keyboard from this anchor point to this anchor point I already have the certain depth and the length I need but it's still not perfect let's move it over a little bit I want to have pretty much obviously also two white lines here outlines that are cutting away so again command T transform mode remember again Windows control T hold shift take the anchor point and make it a little bit smaller I'm gonna accept it with enter V on the keyboard getting to the move tool and literally going to just try to make it put it here into the center now what I'm looking at is do you see down here the thickness it's pretty much the same as at the bottom but over here we are still missing so I need to make it a bit more smaller again command T and transform it a bit more like so from this side hit enter and it's roughly there still a little bit let's actually take the move tool put this into the center and command T again making this slightly bigger again yep obviously a bit of playing until it's there could actually be easier so remember if you get the shape from me I will most probably have done the shape properly already and you would not have to do this step now right click on the shape layer also right click here rasterize and I'm just gonna hold command on the keyboard again Windows hold control select only the layer and that will basically make a selection now now what I will do is just delete the selection here from shape 3 so hit delete command D get out of the selection also you can now delete shape 4 layer this is obviously just to help you cut out here the centerpiece now what I will do as a next step is again obviously starting here with our thorns so you already have your triangle that is all perfect let's go to view clear the guides and we can now start adding and filling and cutting away the reason why we've also rasterized the shape 3 layer now is if for instance we go to the marking tool and want to delete a certain section we can just select it hit delete and right away we also have deleted that yeah great but more about that in a little bit now let's go back to the shapes again I'm going to press U on the keyboard and just go back to the shape library and going to select my thorns over here now before I continue with this I quickly want to show you guys also what I have in our shape library so all of these thorns are available in the Tronics Design Media Package $4.99 like I said per month and you get everything that I create every single week over the whole period of the month so again that means four new packages every week again these are the new packages that I've added now plus the backgrounds and the PSD yeah but have a look on the website is more info okay so let's switch this off I'm also going to take it down and switch layer 3 on again next step that I want to do is obviously have my horns so press U on the keyboard hold shift so it's equally expanding and I'm going to make a little horn here a deer horn okay like so again you guys will also see now it is black again I do want to have this white so let's actually go to the fill color here and select the white fill color now shift command and H together and it will hide the outlines again so obviously we just have the right side now so we need to duplicate this and flip it so shape 4 command J duplicate the layer go back to file no actually edit transform 
and say flip horizontally. Now, V on the keyboard to the move tool, shift, hold shift, and just literally drag it over. Just like so. Great. And it's already in the same position as you can see with Photoshop CC here. It helps you with these pink guidelines. Great. Next step that I will do now is go just to the typing. So let's select the typing over here. And I'm going to make a nice big selection over here, like so. And we're going to write now Thorn. Okay, so all the way Thorn, that is still a little bit too big. Again, remember, select everything. And now we can first of all have a look at the font. So it is called Adobe Caslon Pro Regular, if I said this correctly. You can also have a look down below in the description. I've typed it out again for you. Then let's don't go with regular. I'm going to go with bold over here. And then as well, the, tight, uh, the text size, we will still change, make that a bit bigger. And the character, the tracking here should be, mm, let's say zero for now. We're going to have a look at that at a moment. I'm going to make it nice and big, like so, say around 80 points here. And then the tracking, I'm also going to move that out just a little bit, like 420. Okay, select that. Remember also, I didn't mention this now, if you don't have the character box and the tracking here, go to window and select character box. Okay, I'm going to take the move tool and literally just place this a little bit down lower here. I'm also going to move it just a little bit over. And yes, I might even select it again just with the text tool. So T on the keyboard, select everything. And I will most probably switch this to just 440. Okay, accept it, move tool, and just with the cursors a little bit to the left. And right now again. I actually want the O to be exactly underneath the... Let's actually take a guideline here. And if we put the O exactly underneath, that should be great. Okay, and I'm also placing it roughly somewhere over here. Again, remember guys, you can always use more guidelines in order to have a perfect logo at the end. Now, let's go back to shape 3. And we're going to select the marking tool here, rectangular marking tool. And I'm just going to make a rough selection here and delete the, how would you say, the triangle in the background. Again, you can calculate this again better. I'm lazy. I'm just quickly going to do it like this. Okay, so hit delete. You're deleting that certain selection from shape 3 layer. Press command D and get again out of the selection mode here. Okay, so this select everything. It looks nice. Thorn, again, the shapes. And we also have here, yeah, the thorns. I would actually take two thorns here. So hold command, select both layers. Press command G. And I'm just going to write here, dear horns, so we know what that is. And press command T to transform them still a little bit bigger. Okay, to select that a bit. And I'm moving them down again. Obviously, that is a bit of styling again that you can also do at the end of the logo when looking at how to balance everything. Now, next step that I want to do is take thorn layer here, actually the text layer, and just duplicate that because I want to stick with the same font type. Again, press Command J when you're on that layer. V for the move tool. Drag that all the way down. T again, select it. And first of all, I'm going to write now unique antique. Or, yeah, unique antique. Okay, written that out. Now, Command A, select everything. And first of all, I'm going to select a font size of 13. Very little. I want this to be very, very little. Also, I'm not going to go with bold. This time, I'm just going to go with regular. So it looks a little bit thinner. And let's accept it for now. I'm going to take the Move tool. I literally just place it somewhere over here. And now I do want to end with that logo. I'm kind of looking at the distance that we have from this little stripe here and then the distance of this little stripe. So they're almost equal. So obviously you can calculate it again. I'm too lazy to do it. So I'll just do it here roughly with my eye now so the tutorial doesn't get so long. But normally I would actually calculate how long this is or create another selection, fill it, and then rotate that selection until I know exactly where that end point is. For now, I'm just going to do two anchor points and again T for the text tool, select this unique antique code, oh, sorry, the text. And I'm going to go back to the character box and just move that all the way out. Okay, maybe a little bit more even like so. Accept it again, move tool, and I'll just move that slightly up here. So right over my text. 
Okay, and if that is still too far out of each other, then I might just put it again a little bit in. Let's go to shape 3 again, M for the marking tool, and literally select the whole area and hit delete. Command D, get out of the selection. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So normally I try to get a bit of a feel here for the design and it looks too thin for me. I need to, to make it more narrow. So again, text tool, select everything and this time just the tracking a little bit less. So say maybe 1060 with the move tool, move that just a little bit in. Yeah, so that looks a bit better to me. Zooming out again, how does it feel? Leans to the left, leans to the right, is it equal? Yeah, I think this can work for me. Okay, then let's move that back into the center part. Next step that we'll do is just one more time, write the text over here. Just quickly want to clip my tools. Okay, so again, unique antique. We're going to press Command J, duplicate that. Take the Move tool and literally move this a little bit down. Press T again, and now we're going to write established, all in capital letters, at maybe 1920. Okay, that is nice. I will just change again that it should be around zero. Let's have a look. No, zero tracking is not so nice. So again, I will go here. Let me just select the last one, zero, yes. And now I'm going to switch this maybe just to 1,020. Thousand. The thousand is also good. I'm going to accept it. And with the move tool, literally just want to move this into the center. So I'm not 100% sure again where our center is. Let's go to view, new guide quickly, vertical, and just write 50% again. Yips, no dollar signs there. And yep, not everything is centered anymore. So let's go back to everything. Shape 3, center a little bit. We're going to the deer horns and center that a bit. We're going to go to Thorn, center that a little bit, and Unique, Antique, center also a little bit. That is good. So I'm looking here at these gaps, and then established also that it fits pretty much with the whole width of this. So that is basically it. Again, view, clear the guides, and you're good to go. Yeah, okay guys, so that is basically it for this week's Photoshop design tutorial. Again, remember, we're working only with two shapes. If you want these shapes, have a look in our Tronics Design Media Package, where you can purchase it for $4.99, get all the PSDs, brushes, backgrounds, shapes, everything that you need to get you started. So yeah guys, if you're like me and just can't get enough of Photoshop design, then simply click on the subscribe button right now. We send out free Photoshop tutorials every single week. And if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to share it with all your buddies. Hit me up with a like or leave a comment down below what I could do better. So yeah guys, that's it for this week. I'll catch you all in the next one. So yeah, you're still here and watching. That means you might be interested in the Tronics Design Media Package. Just have a look down below or again hit subscribe. Or if you're completely lost, here on the right hand side are some more tutorials just for you.